Well, this month marks the 21st anniversary of the end of a wonderful run I had playing Cogsworth in the original cast of Disney's highly successful Beauty and the Beast 2000 national tour, and I thought I'd take the time to share some sweet memories with you. Several significant changes were made to the production prior to having its premiere at the TPAC in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we were scheduled to play in several historic theaters, you know, like the Forest and the Mechanic, the old intimate houses of yore that held no more than 2,000 patrons, unlike the theatrical arenas of today that seat almost twice as many. The enormity of the Broadway production limited the musical's ability to travel its original scenic design, as these theaters were unable to accommodate the production's scope. So, the musical was redesigned, and at least in my opinion, much to its benefit. My memory of the Broadway production was being a bit distracted by all of its ornamentation. Now, producer Anthony McLean wisely planned for this new tour design to focus less on the enormity of the castle and, more appropriately, on the musical's exquisite costumes. So, the Beauty and the Beast 2000 tour was redesigned with a new castle and a series of exquisite forced perspective backdrops by scenic designer Stanley A. Meyer, stunningly lit by Natasha Katz. At last, Anne Hould Ward's Tony Award-winning costumes were brought squarely into focus, and the humanity resting underneath all of the frippery became beautifully apparent as we witnessed time and again by the loving receptions we received all throughout the country. There was indeed power in the magic of Disney's spell. Through that first year, we played several glibly sophisticated cities cross-country, but my experience of playing those vaudeville houses in the country's hungry-for-theater heartland, it still moves me to this day. Our wonderful cast was a well-seasoned one. I, on the other hand, was as fresh as a Pollyanna. I'm a nut for theater history, and treading the boards once trodden by the likes of Harry Houdini and Sarah Bernhardt, performing on the same stages that housed so many significant out-of-town tryouts, well, I... I'll just say that lots of people in lots of theaters had lots of tales to tell me, and I lent my eager ear to every single one of them, apocryphal or not. I ended up pinching myself in disbelief all year long, and I wore my bruises with pride. The whole experience was culture shock to me, to an extreme. The musical opens with a narrative prologue recorded by David Ogden Steers. So, imagine the rush of adrenaline that comes with speaking the first live line to a house of 2,000 patrons. Up until then, the largest house I'd performed in regionally was about 500. Add to that the rigorous schedule that comes with a national tour, and it's no wonder my equilibrium was challenged. And, speaking of balance challenges, let me share my glorious costume with you next time in Chapter 2 of this Beauty and the Beast post.